All right, let's continue learning about collections in native Python. We've just finished lists. Let's move on now to dictionaries. These are a bit more advanced, uh, useful in a lot of ways. And uh, let's show you how they work. So the idea of a dictionary is that we're going to switch from a simple list of values to a set of key value pairs. So uh, let's, I'm going to copy that in memory. Let's type out the first couple just so you can get used to it. And then we'll just copy those in so we don't have to waste too much time. So let's continue with our uh, Simpsons example that we had before and start with a name dictionary. Now, the first thing you'll notice, the difference is instead of uh, square brackets, we're going to use curly braces in Python. And that's the same as some other languages too, but not all. And instead of just putting the name Homer, we're first going to put in a key or a unique identifier for Homer. And we're then going to have a semi or a colon to, to uh, indicate that what comes next is the value for that key. So this is where the actual name Homer goes. So that's, a again, it's a key value pair. And we have uh, all of our entries are in this form, the same format, key value pairs. Now, does the key have to be a number? No, it doesn't. Uh, we're going to do all kinds of examples here. So let's finish typing these ones out. Um, also, with the values, do they have to be strings? Nope, they don't. Uh, the values can be numbers as well. Both can be any data type, both the key and the value. So Lisa, and notice that my key value pair Although I'm giving it these numbers in order, they don't have to be in order. It's not a zero-based index like we used with uh, um, uh, lists just before in the, in the prior video. So here we go. There's our uh, dictionary. Let's add a few other dictionaries just so you can see all the different formats that you can use. So I'm just going to paste these from the book. Uh, let's tab back here. I'm going to uh, delete that one that I just made because I've got it right there. All right, so let's look at all the options. So in this one, we have an integer or a number that's the key. Here I've switched to a text key just so you can see that you can do it either way. An age dictionary, I've got a text key but a numeric value. Text key float value, text key boolean value, text key list value. So the values, as with lists, can be anything. And they can be mixed types. Uh, and the keys can also be uh, anything as well. So let's start with reading values from dictionaries. I'll run this into memory. All right, uh, let's, let's next read by using, a, well, first of all, let's just print the whole thing. Let's start with print name dictionary so you can see what that looks like. Okay, uh, because we declared this one second, it overwrote the first one. Uh, so it prints it out just like it looks. Now let's access uh, an individual value like, um, let me come back up here, shift up, and let's print along with that. Oops. Name dictionary. And as uh, before, I use the square brackets to refer to an index. However, in this case, I'm not actually referring to an index. I'm going to refer to a key name. So it's not the position of the one that I want to return anymore, like in, with the list. In this case, if I, as soon as I type a quote, it says, oh, with the name dictionary, you have the following keys right here. And I can see that. Those are my, my keys listed for each key value pair. Pick any of them, run that, and it's going to print out the value. So this is the, my first print line that came from right there. Then my second print line, name P3, it goes there to P3, and it gets the value. And notice it printed out without quotes right there. All right, so... Uh, any, any, any value you want to return, you can get that way. There's also other properties of uh, dictionaries that you can uh, access or print out. So, for example, let's print out name dictionary. And let's use the dot keys property. Well, technically, I guess a method if it has those uh, quotes that, or the parentheses after it. Let's do values and let's do uh, items and show you what each of those do. All right, in this case, here's each of our keys, uh, and there'll be reasons. You might wonder, well, why would I just need to get all the keys? You'll see. There'll, there'll be opportunities to use this uh, in practice in data analytics. Values, no keys, just basically I'm returning the values as a list. And notice what it did right here. It says the this is the data type of what's being returned. So it's not a Python list that's being returned. It's a set of keys from a Python dictionary. And just to make that clear, it wrapped it in this DICT underscore keys uh, uh, 
wrapper here. Same thing with values and items. So items is the key value pair formatted uh, here with parentheses around the two of them. So let's say I wanted to convert these values uh, to a list. Let's see if that's possible. Can I just write list and then put in uh, name dictionary dot values and um, yeah, we just print it like that. Yeah, sure enough. Now I've cast this to a native Python list. And you know that because, well, when I use this wrapper of list, like we did back in the variables chapter with uh, str and int and float and bool, but also it no longer has this dict keys wrapper around it. So in this case, it's a dictionary keys output. And here it's a native Python list. Cool. So that's how we access values from dictionaries. Let's go and uh, edit values from dictionaries. So uh, just like we did with lists, this is pretty straightforward. Um, the only difference between this and uh, accessing values, actually instead of name, let's do let's adjust height like we did in the, in the, in the last one. Um, so the only difference is instead of referring to the index location, just like above, we're gonna refer to a key value. So let's say we got Bart's height wrong and it's now 4.15. And then let's print out height dictionary when we're done. Okay, there we go. So here's, uh, it's been set here to 4.5. When we print it out, that value has been printed. So as it turns out, uh, Python also has a method for updating values. And that's the dot update method. And this, we simply just go in here and say, let's set P3 back equal to 4.1 again. Then let's print out the height dictionary. All right, so back to from 4.5 back to 4.1. So what's the difference between the two? Well, um, honestly, off the top of my head, I can't think of a context. I'm sure there's got to be something. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been created. Some context where you'd need one versus the other. But what I'll often do in this case when I have two options, um, typically when I'm updating something, it's going to be part of some larger data cleaning process. And I'll be updating, you know, possibly millions of records at once. So what I'll do in this case is use, I'm going to take kind of a timeout on collections to show you a cool uh, ability called the time it function or command uh, in Python. And I'm going to use both methods here. I'm going to say p3 uh, equals 4.15. And then I also want to time it height dictionary dot update and P3 set equal to back to 4.1. So here's what, what this function does. Time it will run this a bunch of times and give you the average time it took to complete that line of code. And then it does it again for the second one. So take a look at this. The slowest run. Oh, this uh, well, let me I'll come back to this. Right here, it ran a million, uh, it ran this command a million times. And uh, the average or the best was of doing that three times was 42.7 nanoseconds per loop. And then the dot update method was 143 nanoseconds per loop. Now here, this line above says the slowest run took 40 times longer than the fastest. Uh, so there means that there's some implications for how the data is being uh, stored in, in memory, uh, but basically means that there's more variance for this method than there is for this one. So even though this one's faster, there's more variance. So you can kind of use that information to say, well, all right, my loop uh, plus or minus 40 versus plus or minus 10, this is still better. Even if it takes 80.3 nanoseconds, it's still better than this one on average. So from now on, I'm going to use this method to do my updates. Anyway, cool feature there, that timer, uh, time it function. Okay, let's uh, use something different now. Let's, uh, or, or let's do something different. Let's add an insert into dictionaries. So let's, um, I'm going to pull down my age dictionary again. So I'm going to update and mess with this a few times. I might want to rerun it and not have to scroll back up. So let's pull age dictionary down. And then let's simply set, uh, say we got someone's age wrong. Um, maybe Homer's actually, or now let's say, um, let's add, let's not update. So here's what we're gonna do to add one. We're simply going to say age dictionary, whoops, 
and let's reference an index that doesn't exist, like p6. So, uh, and let's set that equal to, um, I don't know, 37. So this is going to re represent uh, Kirk and Luann again, or this will be Luann. So let's do that, and then let's um, print out age dictionary. So here we get p6 added. Now, if you've got programming, uh, programming background before, you might look at this and realize, okay, that's not normal. That's uh, usually we have to create an object and then insert it. But here we're creating the object as if it existed and assigning it a value and that automatically inserts it. Well, that's because Python's a weakly typed language and the interpreter adapts and just figures out what it is that we mean. That's part of the reason why interpreted languages can be a bit slower, but also uh, a bit easier to code. And so there's a trade off. Uh, but yeah, that's one way of adding. And you'll notice later when you learn about data frames in pandas, it works the same way with adding a new record in pandas. You can just reference a, a record as though it exists, even though it doesn't, like this, and then assign it a value, and then it'll be there in the data frame. Anyway, we'll get to that later. Uh, for now, let's use, um, well, let's create a separate dictionary and then add it to the first. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to copy this one more time. So I can rerun it. This time, let's make a second age dictionary, new age dictionary. And let's put the Van Houten's all in here. Uh, whoops. Let's, let's say, uh, all right, we've got P6. Make that one 37 again. P7. Uh, if this is Kirk, we'll say that he's 40, and then P8, Millhouse is probably like Bart 10. Okay, so new dictionary, and we want to merge or combine these two dictionaries together. Uh, that's actually pretty straightforward. All we're going to do is say uh, age uh, dictionary dot um, update, just like we used before. And we'll put in here new age dictionary. Now then let's print out age dictionary. All right, there we go. Update simply combines this one to the end of the, of the first one. There's the full dictionary. Um, let's go through one more example. Let's grab this one again down here. And in this case, I want to use um, a technique that's kind of cool. Uh, let me show you. I need to look up the actual name of this. So we're going to make a new age dictionary. Uh, and this time, I'm going to set this equal to, and we'll, we're going to do it this double star here, age dictionary, and then another double star. And in this case, we'll add, I'm going to copy here the new values. And then let's print out new age dictionary. So we've accomplished the same thing, one less line of code. And uh, I think what I want to do is compare this method to this one. So here's what's happening here. In this case, we say, all right, let's declare the new dictionary and add it to the previous dictionary all in one step. By We put the, the previous dictionary here and this double star um, the technique for that here, let me pause and, and look that up real quick. All right, here you go. I found a good, nice explanation online. So this uh, double star is used to imply that we're going to have a variable number of arguments that are passed into a function call. So here is a function that takes in three arguments. Now, you haven't learned functions yet, so this may be a little hard to understand. Don't worry about it if you don't. Uh, we'll get to functions later on in the course. But... Uh, if you're looking for a brief explanation, the idea is here's a function that requires three arguments. When I call that function, I can, I can dynamically pass in all three arguments using this double star method and referring to the dictionary that has the arguments in it. See here where I've got, um, I passed in the first argument, arg, arg one right here is the number one, but for arg two and three, notice I have a dictionary and they're not even in the right order, but they're referenced properly by the name and then this kw args lets me just pass in the dictionary by name instead of having to type them all out. So there are situations where that can be pretty useful. But again, if you didn't follow that, don't stress, ignore it, and let's move on. But I, what I do want to do, though, is let's time it and see which of these methods is faster. 
time it and I'm going to grab this line right here. And let's time it with this line right here. Okay. Again, anytime you have multiple options and uh, it really doesn't matter which one that you use, just find out and use the fastest one and it'll make a big difference when you're processing a lot of data. So in this case, dot update was the faster technique for this particular data set. And often, and by the way, the fastest one, fastest method can change. Not always, like with some, sometimes when you have two options, one option will always be faster. But there are other times when you have multiple options and the fastest option will depend on the type of data that you're processing. Anyway, so that's why it's still worth checking this uh, regularly, especially in data analytics when you're coming up with a, a routine to clean and prepare the data. All right, let's move on. Uh, so we've learned how to update. Um, let's go on by, uh, let's remove. I think that's what's next. Let's remove some items from the dictionary. So I'm going to take a new copy of our dictionary here. Let's paste it in. This is um, the name dictionary from up at the top right here. All right, paste that down. Uh, let's print the first method and I'll show you why I'm gonna print it. Name dictionary dot pop. Oh, you actually remember this from lists. Pop isn't new to you, we did this last time. So this time, as, you're, as you might remember, what pop does is it actually removes items from the original list and then it returns that item. So when I call dot pop, it is going to remove it from the original name dictionary, uh, but it's going to show the value of P1 right here. There you go, Homer. And now if I were to print out name dictionary again, you can see that Homer is no longer in the list. So pop works just like it did before. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's use the, actually what I can do is I can keep this right here for a demo. Let's do the clear method. Name dictionary dot clear. And then we'll show name dictionary after that. Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, I meant to print these things out. Sorry. Print and print and. All right, there we go. So here's the result of the pop uh, method. Here's printing the dictionary to show that it's gone. Here's the re printing the dictionary after the clear method. Okay, uh, removing, um, I guess another way to remove that we talk about is you can select a sample from the list. Um, actually, no, we, we don't do that with dictionaries. So I'm gonna leave this one right there for removing. Uh, let's show a few other relevant methods and these I'm just gonna copy and paste in to be brief. So you don't have to sit here and watch me go through them one by one. Delete that out of the way. Don't need that one anymore. All right. So let's recreate our name dictionary, print all these. So just like before, length will give us the number of items, but keep in mind, it's the number of pairs, not the number of keys plus values. Uh, we can use the sorted method again with this, but I'm doing it on the values and on the keys. So you can see it's sorted, uh, just the values and keys. Um, if I can use the type to return the type to check and see that I've got a dictionary here when I refer to the age dictionary, but if I, refer to or select a key name, it will give me the type then of the value of that key. So these are all useful techniques with dictionaries uh, that will likely come up at some point as we're cleaning and analyzing data. Okay, that's it for dictionaries. Uh, if you're watching this video as part of the book, there's some practice problems in there that you can work through uh, with some answers that are linked to. If not, uh, then we're all done here.